what we're going to do first is we are going to uh, look at our giant beaker and our burette, and um, we're going to um, start uh, this online activity. And the online activity, um, we don't need to go through it yet, but the online activity said to start with hydrochloric acid in your, in your beaker or in your flask. And so I ask you guys to build um, some hydrochloric acid molecules, right? And so when you did that, I'm sure your hydrochloric acid molecules, um, you built it like this. Like that's your H and that's your CL. Is that what you did? Now in water, if I have a, um, a hydrochloric acid solution, in water, is this what it actually looks like? Does it stay um, together? No. Um, remember that the dot pole dot pole interaction between the oxygen and the hydrogen is stronger than the covalent bond between the chlorine and the hydrogen, and it makes hydronium and chloride. So take your hydrochloric acid, your four particles that I told you to make, and go ahead and put them in your beaker. And you're going to um, make your hydrogen from the acid actually be a hydronium ion. So go ahead and do that. Put those together. So you should have four chlorides and four hydroniums. The sound of magnets rolling. Okay. <laughs> The magnets do sit really well if you'll um, kind of roll them to the flat side where the magnets are. I say that as my roll around the table. to float around in the water. The spectator ion for this, this hydroxide, will remove a hydrogen from a hydronium. So check this out. One hydronium and one hydroxide yields two waters. So I have neutralized one hydronium ion. Okay. So only add one um, at a time. So now I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add one more sodium hydroxide. So you're going to go down through the burette and the sodium will be a spectator ion and the hydroxide will remove another hydrogen from another hydronium. Now this is a really important point in the titration. This is what's called, can y'all see that this is halfway to be a neutral, it's halfway to neutralizing the acid molecule. This is called mid equivalent. Okay, so when we look at our titration curve, um, if you look at the titration curve I already gave you, what we're doing, excuse me, that's still wrong. If what we're doing is, if this is halfway, I mean, excuse me, if this is at equivalence, halfway to equivalence is somewhere right here. See how the pH is still acidic and the pH hasn't really gone up that much? If I look here, my pH still has to be below 7 because I have two hydroniums and any hydroxide I've added to the system has neutralized acid. It hasn't brought the pH above 7. So this is mid-equivalence and that's actually a really important point. 
point, um, you don't realize it yet. <clears throat> it's an important point because if you look at your formula sheet right here, there's a form. I really try to not be upside down, but I still am upside down. That's right. Right there. That's crazy. Um, there's a formula and it says pH is equal to pKa plus the log of A minus so my conjugate base over my acid. Um, at mid equivalence, which is here, pH is equal to the pKa of an acid. I know you don't really get that yet, but do you get that <clears throat> I have half acid and half conjugate base at this point? Yeah. Um, so the log of one, because it's something divided by itself is one, the log of one is zero. So pH would be equal to pKa if the concentration were equal because it would be plus zero. That's tomorrow's lecture, but I'm just bringing that to your attention today. If you don't totally get it yet, that's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and neutralize all of this acid. Let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to need to add another sodium hydroxide. There we go. And one more after that. So I can make sounds. I don't think it actually makes any sound like this. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> so, what exactly do I really have here in this big? You have salt water, don't you? So, here's the deal. Your sodium is a conjugate acid of a, of a strong base. So, does sodium affect pH? No, because it's a very weak acid. Very weak acid. So, and then the chloride ions, the green ones, they're the conjugate base of a strong acid. Are they going to affect pH? No. So when you titrate a strong acid with a strong base, or vice versa, at equivalence, which is where they're equal, <clears throat> your pH is going to be 7. And this is why. Now let's just pretend for a second that this green, instead of being chlorine or chloride, let's pretend that that was chloride and this was hydrochloric acid. If we had started off with hydrochloric acid, um, all of the acids would still um, be neutralized by the hydroxide. The hydroxide would still be able to come in and remove the hydrogens from the HF. They would be able to do that. It's a strong base. But at equivalence, this would be what it would look like. And these green little ions, the chloride ions, they are the conjugate base of a weak acid. So the pH here at equivalence, if these were chlorides, would it be set? Now what would it be? Above or below set? What? Above, right? And so that is what they're going to pull in the AP exam. They're going to have titration first. And they're going to give you acid in the base. And they'll have one where the equivalent point is at 7 for pH. And then there might be one that has the equivalent point at 9 for pH. And then if you had a weak acid and a strong base, you have to, oh, okay, the one with 9 is the right answer. You feel me on that one? Okay, so that is a equivalence point. So if you look on the graph that I gave you, um, when you came in the door, or you picked up on the way in the door, um, you can see that you just basically have salt water. I'm fine, this could be difficult. There you go. Um, so there that is. Okay. Um, on your homework, when you read it, I did ask you to draw in a box right here at mid equivalence, and that's just where you had two acids, um, and it had made some water, but you had half of the acid remaining. So you do need to draw me one little box. I drew this yesterday, um, and then um, I didn't think to use these little particles, and that came into my mind as I was driving, and I'd already drawn these. So, anyway, um, you need to draw me another box right here at mid equivalence, which would just be half of them. Would be too far, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, notice here that the pH shoots up very quickly after equivalence. This is honestly, you guys, this really steep line right here, that is one drop. That is one drop of sodium hydroxide. Um, the pH rises very quickly. And so let's take a look. Right here at 7, it's neutral. Let's add one more sodium hydroxide, okay? As I add the sodium hydroxide, do my little 
hear it? The hydroxide is not going to make anything neutral. It's going to have more acid. The sodium is just going to float around again as a uh, spectator ion. So the pH is, uh, is going to go up now because now I have hydroxide ions in, in excess. So um, hydroxide, remember we're going to take the negative bond back to get pOH and the pH is, is above. And so if I keep adding sodium hydroxide, if I keep letting sodium hydroxide drip out of the cigarette, the pH is going to continue to go up. And it will eventually kind of level off, and you can see that in your titration curve, because at some point, the pH of your solution, if you keep adding enough sodium hydroxide, it will be almost or about the same as the pH of what you started with. So you can see, um, if this is one molar sodium hydroxide, the pH of sodium hydroxide is one molar, is you know, 14. So you can see it kind of goes up and levels off. Um, and then we can heal. Get it? Okay, so let's take this and let's go ahead and like do number one in your homework, okay? Um, um, as far as the little magnets and stuff, I do want you to put them back, but don't do it right now because I'm still teaching. So after I get finished, yes, I would like you to clean them up, but not right now. So <clears throat> let's hold that thought and let's go through your homework. Um, if you look at your homework, it says to, um, it tells you exactly what to pick. Okay, and so on the document it says to get, um, select the type of reaction and you're going to select strong acid and strong base. And then it tells you to fill the burette with base. And then, so we've done that. Now number three is the next part. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Number three is, I thought I clicked that. There we go. Number three is the next part and number three it says to Choose uh, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, which is what we just used. And then don't forget number four. Last period, a lot of people forgot number four. Number four is selecting the indicator. Do you remember when we done the we had done the titration at the beginning of the semester, and then it turned it turned pink, and then we were done, right? If you don't oops, if you don't choose an indicator, you're just gonna drop one clear thing into another clear thing, and um, that's gonna be really fun as we. Uh, let me make that go away. I'm sorry. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun as we sit here and wait for it to turn pink and it won't. So pick an indicator. Phenolphthalein. Everybody seeing where I am on the directions? <clears throat> All right. Now you're just going to add the base dropwise um, into your acid. Now the point of a titration, check this out. The point of a titration is we will know uh, one of the parties uh, one of the species, we will know its molarity and its volume. So, like, I can tell the molarity of the acid is 0.1874, and I know the volume in the acid is 25 milliliters. I can use that to get moles of acid, right? All right, now, um, if I go ahead and I uh, start adding some sodium hydroxide, I'm going to get a volume here, but I don't know the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. So, I can do some math here in a minute to find out the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. Now I'm going to have to keep dropping this in here until um, it turns a soft pink and it stays pink. So um, this is going to take a while. I can slide mine up. You can't. Sorry. Um, I apologize. So I'm just going to keep dropping this in until it's, it'll kind of flash pink when you're getting close. So your numbers are different than mine. That's okay because I want you to do your own math. We are going to be able to check our answers when we finish, though. So we're just going to continue putting sodium hydroxide. And again, we don't know the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. That's the point of doing this. So if I found some sodium hydroxide in the stock room, which has happened before, and I don't know the molarity of it, I can actually mathematically figure that out, which is cool. So keep dropping your acid, or excuse me, keep dropping your base. And we could have easily, just as easily, put the base down here and dropped acid, and we would have got the same answer, right? Doesn't really matter. And once, it's not um, flashing pink yet, but once it starts, you know, you're getting closer. And that's fun. Oh, I have made it a very small increment. There we go. I was like, no, this is not fun. It's going 
Titrations, whether they're virtual or real, they're arduous and not the most exciting thing that's ever happened. Did you make sure you selected an indicator? Last period, three different people didn't, and that was hilarious, except it wasn't. Oh, mine's flashing pink. See how it's turning pink and then going back? That means you're getting close, so chill it out. Anybody reached uh, equivalence point yet? It'll be equivalence point when, and end point really, um, when they, when the color stays. And the, basically it turns pink when the acid and the base are equal. I don't I always say basically, it just is funny when I'm in the acid base unit. There's certain words that I say over and over again and that's definitely one of them. I'm sorry, not more interesting and parodying. <laughs> I wonder if these magnets will stick to the board. Oh, my life just changed. Because look, like, right? It could just be like, I know I'm not. I'm just, I have a B. Okay, that's, that's happening. I want to make a video of how to do this, like how to show this, or like if a kid is in a class and they don't have these little magnets, y'all don't understand how confusing this crap is. I mean, maybe you do, but I thought maybe a little child could watch the video. Is it pink yet? That means you went over. You need to stop when it stays faint pink and the color doesn't change anymore. So you're actually... Y'all have extra OHs. You're you're up at the top of the graph. That really steep um, change in pH is one one drop. No, just take off maybe like point oh two, and don't do that in real life. Doubt's life, doubt's life, doubt's life. This is teasing me. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody's is different. Your molarity and volume is different than mine. Grace is done. She says. Yay! I did it. I want one drop over. Don't try again. It's okay. All right. Is everybody's pink? If yours is pink and you're done, you can clean up the magnets for your group. Now listen, the sodium and chloride, you get one sodium, one chloride in a cup, one ethane, which is that gray one, and then like nine or ten waters. And then the rest of the sodium chloride goes in the box. Don't be that kid, thanks. These are my, my precious babies. It should be a slightly lighter. I want one drop over. But it should stay pink. That's what it's on time. Yeah.
talking to me? You're just pushing the button over and over and over again, so. Go on eat eggs. Did you hit the female failings, Leon? Yeah. Do you have an extra sodium? Because I have an extra sporadic. Mm -hmm. If anybody's short of uh, someone in the room is short of sodium, so you are that person. And then you have the answer. Well, one does go to the top. Yeah, there's one. Cool. Great. He's making me sad. I'm sorry. It's okay. Go over. It's okay. Just as long as you didn't go over one drop. All right. You ready? Let's do math. We can make, we can do the rest of the magnets later. Everybody reach the end point though. I want you to do it here. Hold on, teach you Cool, let's read it anyway. Um, here we go. So y'all can clean up when I'm finished, and because um, there's some more to do. Uh, if you check out your um, your directions, it says to you know put the molarity in. Well, you got to do math. So let me show you how to do the math. Now I'm using a BCA table, and I understand that you're like, oh no, 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 I can do this without no. Okay, I've been to this party before. It doesn't have any cheese dip. Do what I'm telling you. Okay. Um. So, what we've done here is, we don't need this, this is not part of it. Um, what we've done here is, we have a, the, the net ionic equation, which is what we talked about yesterday for this, is hydrogen uh, plus hydroxide gets into water, right? So, well, what we can do, like I had told you guys, is we can use this data for the known, and we can solve for moles of acid. And so, um, if we're doing moles of acid, I'm going to use an ice table or a BCA table. Right. And so, um, to solve for the moles of acid that I, so I can put it here, I mean, you understand that still this is minus X and this is minus X and this is plus X and that's, you know, water's not going to really affect anything. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do 25 milliliters, which is 1, 2, 3.02. 500 liters of um, hydrochloric acid, and then I have um, one liter of hydrochloric acid, and it is uh, 0.1874 moles of HCl. And listen to me, I graded the quizzes that you were going to take on Monday. I graded those last year because I'm a teacher for this class, and half the people failed. And the reason they failed is because not every app, not every base. Check it out. Not every base only has one hydroxide, so I have two. And so I need you to do this last step for me. I need you to make it hydrogen because this is hydrogen. I need you to do that. Some of you won't do it because you don't feel like it. But then I won't feel like giving you any points. Okay? So, um, 0.025 times 0.1874. And when I do that, I get the initial moles of hydrogen or point. Oh, oh, four, eight, nine. Now, I, I went through this um, reaction until it was at equivalence. So I'm going to use up all the acid, right? We just neutralized every bit of acid, did we not? So I'll have zero of this. So X, obviously. So what, what number of moles of hydroxide? How about that many? How about me? Does that make sense? Would I not also have the same number of moles of hydroxide? Okay, so, and I'm going to use all those up at equivalence. Now, I realize I'm doing a lot of work, and maybe you could do it faster, but it's not worth it. Trust me, it's not, it's not worth it, okay? Um, so, <clears throat> to find the molarity of the base, I uh, have moles of base, don't I? How would I, you can look on your formula sheet, molarity is moles 
divided by liters, the moles of this is 0 0.00489 moles. Your moles and stuff are different, right? Because you have a different thing going on. Um, but my volume is 19.979, which is 0 0.0, I didn't mean, but 0 0.019979 liters. Y'all following me? And so my molarity um, of hydroxide or sodium hydroxide more specifically is 0 0.0234. All right, so now, are y'all good? Happy times? Yours is different. Yeah, every so lot. Mine is point oh two three. No, mine is just point two three four. I read my calculator wrong. I'm sorry. You're good. That's my fault. Have y'all ever uh, read your calculator wrong? Just me? Yes. There. All there. No, I, I read the X one wrong. I looked at it and I'll, I thought it said to the negative second. It's only to the negative third. I think first. All right, so now I'm going to type that number into this little box. Y'all, are you confused? Are you sure? You're good now? So point two three. 4, 4, and that's my molarity of my um, base, and I can say, okay, and it's correct. Yay. And so, even if your numbers are different from your neighbors, or you're doing your homework at the house, you can see that, you know, it's going to be okay. All right, so, um, what I need to do now, if you read your directions on your homework, it says to um, click on the graph, and it says graph right here. It pops up when you say okay and you get it right. And so I'm going to click on the graph, and here's the titration curve, and it looks a lot like the one you got up on the way in the door, right? And so I started out at a pH of zero, or, or right above zero, and then at equivalence, equivalence happened around seven here, actually at seven, and then after equivalence, the pH r rose quickly and then leveled off um, as the hydroxide ion concentration approached the sodium hydroxide uh, concentration the hydroxide ion concentration in the sodium hydroxide. There. Um, so, how does that make y'all feel? You okay? And so what I want y'all to do in your homework is I want you to draw this, and then I want you to draw a little box. Are you watching? I want you to draw a little box, and I want you to start with four of the beginning molecules, whether they be acid or base. Four of them right here at the beginning. And then I want you to neutralize half of them at the midway, at the mid-equivalence point. And then I want you to have it neutral here at, at the equivalence point, And then I want you to go above the equivalence point. And this would be where we had our extra hydroxides. How's it make you feel? So on Monday when you take your quiz, I may ask you to draw some stuff. I may give you some pictures of circles. Um, and then I'm definitely going to ask you some math, okay? So it's good times. You are not doing homework for the next chapter. This is your homework for Monday. Your other, so we just did one together. Maybe you didn't finish, but you should have gotten pretty close or done the first part. Um, like I had said already, I'm going to end up teaching you uh, the vast majority of it by Monday. So it's not really, this is better for you to do. Okay, so um, we're going to switch over. And what we're going to do now today is we're going to do the first half of acid base 5. Um, and the reason for that is because it's simpler than acid base 4. We'll pick up acid base 4 a little bit tomorrow and the second half of acid base 5. I looked at it and I think, I think that's going to work out the best for you. Acid base 5, the first half is pretty chill. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, everybody find this. You good? Alright, here we go. 
if you still have a bunch of stuff out, that's okay. I, this lesson it doesn't take super long time. So, um, an acid-base titration. I already told you this, but what you're going to do is you're going to take um, a strong acid of known concentration. You can add it to a base uh, with an indicator like phenolphthalein, or you can take a strong base of known concentration. And you can add it to an acid, and the acid doesn't have to be a strong acid. Um, acid-base reactions, as long as one is strong, will go to completion. Um, if we started with HF and water, they would be set together, and then the hydroxide will come along and make water, okay? Um, anyway, the indicator, where that turned pink, that's called the end point. The thing about that, let me show you something. Check this out. That is one drop. I already told you that. How, how do you feel? You good? The end point for phenolphthalein is, I want to say, it's not exactly seven. I think it might be eight or nine, but... Something like methyl blue, I think it has an endpoint of like nine. Well, guess what? If I picked nine, if I even though it's neutral at seven, if I picked an indicator that has an endpoint of nine, that's one drop that would work. But equivalence point would be a pH of seven. If I picked an indicator that had an endpoint of five and a half, that would also be cool because that one drop does this. You see what I'm saying? So as long as you pick an indicator whose end point is along the steep part of the titration curve, you're good. All right? So, but the thing is, that end point, the, where it turns pink, that might not be where the pH is exactly 7. It may be 6 or 8, but it's on the, the very quick part of the change for the um, titration curve, so it's fine. Um... I lost my stuff. There it is. Okay, so equivalence point is actually where moles equals moles. And so that's where you do the math, okay? And then that would be the pH of 7 for strong acid and base. So strong acid, base, titration, we're doing that today. You can also do a weak acid, strong base, strong uh, acid, weak base. It doesn't matter. All right, so here is our first example. Um, we have 30 milliliters of 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid, and we're going to titrate it with 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. Now, I've realized that these numbers are real nice and cute because it's the same molarity, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to be very thorough because you're not always going to be able to do stuff in your head. Some of y'all have tried that, and it doesn't always work. It's better to be thorough, okay? Um, so, anyway, let's go ahead, and can you all find the initial pH of the 0.5 mole hydrochloric acid? When they ask you to find the pH of any acid, in your mind, will you do anything? You better make sure it's a strong acid start punching it into the pH formula. And is it a strong acid? So we're good. We can just go negative log. pH is equal to the negative log of 0.5 because that's a hydrogen ion concentration. So this is strong acid. So um, now in your head, sometimes you won't have a, well, it's not sometimes. Half of the time you're taking AP step, you will not have a calculator. And in your head, you should know that one molar hydrochloric acid has a pH of zero. And 0.1 molar has a pH of 1. So this is in between those, isn't it? So my pH should be between 0 and 1. And is it? Negative log. Oops, I got the wrong button. Negative log 0.5. So I got 0.3. And that's, that's, that's right. I mean, that's in that range. Um, so 0.301. Oh, and I need to have, uh, looks like, two sig figs of so 0.3. Is 0.30. Okay, so what I have to do now is um, B, C, and D. They are asking me to find the pH in three different points in this titration curve. All right, um, so on C, I have 30 milliliters of 0.5 molar hydro, um, sodium hydroxide. Do you see how that's the same as this? So on part C, the pH is 7. So I'm going to show you the work though. All right, here we go. So let's do the work for the pH after 15 milliliters of sodium hydroxide are added. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to my white screen. You're good. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to write my net ion equation. Strong acid, strong base. So it's just hydrogen and hydroxide gives you water. I'm going to, um, I need to, um, take these volumes and get moles. So again, I'm going to use a BCA table for this. Um, and so initially in all these, um, I'm going to have started with 
Um, I said 30 milliliters, right? So 30 milliliters. I don't have it in front of me, y'all do, so keep me straight, okay? So that's um, 0 0.030 liters of hydrochloric acid. And then the molarity was uh, 0.5 molar. So 0.05 moles of hydrochloric acid in one liter. And then I'm doing this next step because I love you and I want you to do good things in your life. And that's one mole of hydrogen. So I guess that gives you 0 0.0150 moles of hydrogen. I feel like that's right with my mental math skills. Um, so that's going to be before the reaction. That's what I have in the class before I start to titrate, okay? Now, they told me that I added um, to this, I'm adding to this, are y'all good still? I added 15 milliliters of the sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to need to convert that to moles, and then I'm going to put that in the VCA table. So 15 milliliters is 0 0.015 liters. And then it was also 0.5 molar. Um, and so this is going to be 0 0.0075 moles of hydroxide. If you're not good at math, but you know, you still you may not have a calculator or whatever, um, to find the limiting reactant, um, they have the same molarity and you have half the volume of sodium hydroxide. So right there you should be like, well, I'm gonna run out of sodium hydroxide. But if you can't do that, you can do math. Um, so I can tell that this is like 15 bucks and this is like seven dollars and fifty cents because I have uh, one less zero right here, so it's you know a larger number. Anyway, um, these are both going to be minus x, and this is going to be a plus x thing. And the water isn't going to affect anything right now. Um, but x is going to be equal to 0 0.00750 because it's the smallest value. So uh, proportionally, uh, less moles of this are, are, are available to react with. So then I will be left with zero of this, and then I will be left with 0 0.00750 moles of the hydrogen. Now, can I plug that mole, uh, the mole value there, the molar value, can I plug that into the pH formula? No. So, this is the tricky part. It's not really that tricky, though. Here's the deal. pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, right? This is not the concentration, but the concentration of hydrogen at this point it's pretty easy to find. It's moles divided by liters. So I have 0 0.00750 moles of hydrogen. And me writing the substance each time keeps me from messing up. And that's in the liters of solution. Now, I know that I started with 30 milliliters of hydrogen, but that's not the amount of solution I have currently. The amount of solution I have currently would be 45 milliliters. Are you following? Make sure you add it up. So because I have 30 milliliters of acid plus 15 milliliters of hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So I have 45 milliliters altogether. And 45 milliliters would be 0 0.045 liters. And that is my hydrogen ion concentration because that's what molarity is equal to. So now I can find the pH because I know the hydrogen ion concentration is 0.1667. And now I can take the negative log of that number. And I find my pH to be at this one point. I need two sig figs, so 0.78. This is not hard. But you have to 
think about how this is if you're gonna mess something up, you're gonna mess up when it's not one to one ratio because you're going to do this, or you will mess up the volume and you go to find more layers and then you won't add them up, or you'll feel real good about yourself and you'll just put this right to the page. Those are things that you could do and don't do them. All right, so I already told you part C was seven because it's equal. So whatever. Why don't you go ahead and see if you can do part D by yourself? And I'll certainly be erasing this. We use the same DCA table, um, but I will have to change the values for the sodium hydroxide. So can y'all hand, handle that or want to try? I don't know why I raised my hand. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna start working it out. Um, of course, I'm gonna need to find the moles of hydroxide initially. So. Okay, did everybody find the moles of hydroxide successfully? I got 0 0.0225. Mm -hmm. Now, we are past the equivalence point, yeah? So, it would make sense at this point for hydrogen to be the limiting reaction. Check it out. If I solve for x on both of those, hydrogen x is only $1.50, but hydroxide's x is $2.25. See what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, obviously I'm going to run out of hydrogen. And x would be equal to 0 0.0150. Okay, I'll keep going. I'll give you some time to try to do the pH and stuff, okay? So it's asking for the pH at this point, okay? Here.
math at this and you multiple choice part of the AP without a factor. I can solve for the pH of this without a factor of right now. You should be able to see too. Let me show you. Alright, so here's the deal. Do you see how these numbers look the same? They just have the different decimal places. If you do scientific notation, that works, but it also works to go one, two, three. Okay, that looks like seven and a half. One, two, three. Well, seven and a half divided by 75, that's one ten. Did you follow me there? So one tenth is point one, which is one times ten to the negative one. Y'all still with me? When you take my POH, it's the negative log of it. So log means you chop the tree down, you get negative one, and negative log makes that go away. So the POH is one, so the pH is thirteen. Um, but it'll be really apparent to you that you need to do this um, when you don't have a calculator you're taking multiple choice tests. So I want to show you as many times as I can, um, you know, how to do stuff in your head when you're able to. And that, now, now does this mathematically make sense that the pH would be 13? If you stopped and you got one and, hey, homeboy, you just had extra hydroxides and you told me that the pH was one, that doesn't make sense. So you need to check your answer when you get done. So that's... That's acid base titration. How was that? So right. Okay, cool. Um I really, 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 really struggled with that. I remember staying after class, you know, not this summer, but the summer before that, and just completely clueless on how to do that. I really stayed after for like 45 minutes because she, you know, we really explained it and I was like, okay, well, we already blah blah blah. And I just didn't understand it at all. So um just somebody, sometimes people just seem to be like, this is how you do it. Um, anyway, that didn't happen. So, <clears throat> good times. Um, we already did all this. They're just doing the same thing we did. But it just doesn't look as cool. Um, this is, this is all the things I just did. There's no easy way to do any of this. There's no easy ways. Just do the way you know how to do it. And that it makes sense. Alright, so this is what the titration curve looks like. That's what I was, um, showing you during our activity. Um, the equivalence point of, is seven if it's a strong acid and base. So you're looking at a titration curve and it has seven where equivalence happens. Um, I need to make that stop. I need you to connect to it, but I don't want to. Um, then you know you have a strong acid and a strong base. Also in a strong acid and a strong base, this part at the beginning will be flat and the part at the end will be flat. If you have a weak acid, It'll actually kind of be more like a slope, and we'll look at that tomorrow because it buffers better. Ooh, I can't wait. Sorry. Um, anyway, so um, the pH doesn't change a whole lot in this beginning point where you have like that mid equivalence because, again, pH, you got to remember, it's a logarithmic scale. So to go from a pH of 2 uh, to 3, you have to reduce the hydrogen ion concentration by power of uh, a tenth, right? So that's why it doesn't change a whole lot. And then it does change very quickly here because you have no more hydroxides or, excuse me, hydroniums to absorb those hydroxides and make water. So it goes up really quickly. And then you stay at your pH of your base, basically. All right, so here's another one. This one's pretty cool. Um, I have 31.25 milliliters of a 0.250 molar hydrochloric acid. I'm going to titrate it with an unknown concentration of sodium hydroxide. So the, the sodium hydroxide will be the unknown in this case, similar to the online thing we did. The end point was reached, which was where the, the indicator changed colors. Okay. Um, when 32.75 milliliters of sodium hydroxide were added. Um, so what I'm going to do on this one, this is just like what we had done on the online activity. This is the same thing. Can you all do this one by yourself? The ECA table, right? I'll get you started. And you need to get the moles. I didn't do a very good job with my box there. I think I drew a line. That's okay. I can see it's fine. There we go. All better. So um, if I make a BCA table, I 
Again, the net ionic equation is just hydrogen plus hydroxide gives you water. And the one substance that I can find the moles for is the acid. And I'm going to put those in here, and I'll be able to find the moles of hydroxide. And then I can find the concentration of the hydroxide, so I'll know the volume. Can you give it a try? Give you a two-minute head start. How did you guys see? Did you find the moles of the hydroxide to be 0 0.00781? And like by definition, if I wanted to be lazy, I could just be like, okay guys, moles of hydroxide equals moles of hydrogen and equivalents, and you wouldn't need a chart. But, 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 you have to realize that <laughs> these problems are just like, what's the equivalence point? It's always like, what's left over? What's floating around? Blah, 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 blah. And if you have it all laid out here, it's better for you when you go to answer those, what kind of circles are in that beaker kind of questions, which is, you know where it's going, right? That's, they're going to do that to you. So, anyway, the moles of hydroxide are 0 0.00781, um, and then I know the volume of it is 32.75. So, if I want to know the molarity, again, molarity is equal to the concentration, oh, just kidding. Yeah, molarity is equal to the concentration. That is the definition of molarity. But molarity is equal to moles divided by liters, and so... My moles are 0 0.00781 moles of hydroxide. And then my liters of solution are going to be 0 0.03275. And so my molarity is equal to 0.2. It's like I had three six eight point two three nine molar sodium hydroxide. That's not bad. That's not the worst thing that happened. Now, some of the kids last year, from last year, that's not that bad. They'll probably think you're lying. Um, but it's not so bad if you think about it the right way. So that's what we got. Cool. Um, so here is... Um, Here's another one. It's just like the last one. Um, do y'all feel good about these with the little char and then divided by the liters and all that? You good? Because um, this is just taking up more time that you could be doing your practice problems. Okay. So um, this is not, it's not so bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you take your answer key and then I'm going.